How are you James Marja here at JTEC and I'm going to go over some of the inspection and safety features of an overhead crane, how to inspect it, and then how to do an operation. Uh, <clears throat> so you have an overhead gantry crane, uh, electrically controlled, uh, so you'll have a power box somewhere in the facility that is normally always on for the most part. Um, <clears throat> so then you're going to make sure that's in, engaged and turned on. Then you're going to come over here you're going to find the controls. Um, so beginning we're going to start looking at the controls. First, the control box um, has the control panel. This is the safety switch, safety lock, so now it's in disengaged. Should be disengaged, but it seems to be engaged, but at least the motor is hitting, so that safety switch doesn't seem to see effect. So now if I push it, see what happens. Okay, now it's disengaged. <clears throat> so Flick it, make sure it's unengaged, so now everything should work. But actually, I will disengage it again. So looking at this, you can see there's cracks, tape, again, cracks, crack control knobs. So right there, the knobs are heavily worn, um, and that's a dangerous thing, uh, because you're not getting proper, adequate pressure on it. Um, one of the other things is, even the controls. Up and down, I'm kind of going to give you. No matter what way you're looking at it, it's pretty much up and down, unless you happen to be standing on something and it's holding down and it's going that way. Here's my left and right. <clears throat> I'm going to turn it back on real quick so that way we can kind of get it. Alright, while well, I'm facing this way, if I wanted to try and figure out which way left or right is, I should be able to compare it up to a compass with some type of design labeled, you know, whether it means left, right, up, down, north, south, east, west, some type of compass over on the side over here that would then compare to <coughs> the uh, the controls here. Whether even it said, you know, that way is yellow, this way is red. So this way here, if I push it, this should then move the carriage one way or the other. So here, I do, if I'm facing obviously this portion of the building and I push the yellow, it works great. If I'm facing the other side of the building, i.e. now the camera, and I push that left, it's still going that way, even though my desire is to maybe want it to go that way. Because again, the control says it's going that way. So you kind of got to be smarter than the controls. However, <clears throat> they should match up to some type of compass on the gantry, and they don't. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, so there's some discrepancies on there. Uh, functional, yes, but still can become a safety hazard, especially the directional control that doesn't match anything else. Next, we're going to look at the cable that goes up. As you see, there's a cable here, <clears throat> non-wire cable, that holds this from falling down to the ground, keeps it more secure to the box but the other electrical cable is not connected to it. It should be duct taped, zip tied, wrapped around, um, some type of tether to the other cable, so that way there's no stress on it, no chance of this getting caught on a load, getting caught on uh, the fences you walk by, anything else like that, because the amount of electricity coming in and out of here can hurt you. <clears throat> and as you walk up, as then you take your view up to the crane itself. Part of this, you need to make sure that the Controls slide down slide smoothly, and there's no uh, rips or tears or anything missing on the clamps, which seem to be working. So you have your tank harness up there, which does move back and forth nicely um, and fairly evenly on this rail, so, there's, so that seems to be good. Um, but as we're now looking at it, there's another rail right here along the, a gray rail that's right along the, the green gantry uh, frame. And that is part, most likely the electrical hookups taking you back down to the power control. So off of that, you see the mounting frame of it is just a piece of angle iron. It doesn't look original, so that looks kind of fabricated in shop. So that's kind of dangerous. But not too bad, but some of those exposed wires are not uh, properly secured. Um, so that portion of it, then you go over there, the control box doesn't have a camp panel cover of it on it over here on the other portion of the gantry. Uh, so some of that electrical exposed wire is kind of dangerous. So that's something that you'd have a professional electrician or the crane manufacturer from this or a crane technician certified in these cranes to come neaten up, pretty up, and service. Um, <clears throat> next, we can look at the actual two gantries that go, or the, the carriage that goes across here. And a lot of corporations, even manufacturers, you can find them online, will have some type of checklist on what to see, what to look at when you're doing your daily inspection. Um, one thing when you want to look at that, you want to look at for any cracks in it, any chipped paint, any rust spots. 
um, especially along the welds, because that'll then identify that the paint is cracked because of the, the rust. Something's penetrating that into it, and you're getting a crack in there. Humidity's getting in there, moisture's getting in there, and it's going to damage it. Um, something else that you should see up there is a, some type of load certification date. These should be certified once a year for this one here is a seven ton crane. Um, so once a year you should have a uh, certified company come in and load test the crane. Part of that is a more in-depth safety, um, i.e. looking at the electrical, looking at some of the movement of the parts. They'll service the crane, proper lubes uh, on the crane, proper oils in any of the motors. Um, and proper function of all the safety switches. So that is an annual one that fixes all your main problems. Can be a little costly, but it's definitely more beneficial to use that inspection um, than to not. Um, so anyway, this one here looks pretty good. Uh, they do not look too bad. One of the other ones, now you're gonna look at your, your framing, which all runs all the way down. Uh, you just kind of stand in here. You're gonna look, want to look, follow the frames all the way down and look for any obstructions in it. Um, on this, I do see some obstructions from the ceiling also. Some of those air vents down there, uh, further down in the bay. They're obviously dented already. Um, so obviously they've been hit by the crane one, in one faster than the other. So that is actually a safety problem. Uh, it should be highly, highly identified by some nice yellow safety tape, safety paint, something. that says, hey, they're there, don't hit them. Uh, or they should just be removed for the safety and use of this actual crane. If you're gonna lift anything seven tons, you hit that, there's gonna be a problem. So now we want to look at see how the carriage moves back and forth. Um, actually, I'm looking at a exposed wire coming across the top of there. So I'm going to actually try and move this crane a little bit over away from that possible exposed wire. So turn the crane on. So we're going to now actually now see if the gantry moves back and forth on that frame. I kind of have to do a little bit of guessing on which one this load was, because this is not a crane I use every day. So I guess right. So as you see, as you move, you push the switch, and as you let go, there is a brake. Um, sometimes the brakes still allow a little bit of excess movement. Um, it's not always an immediate um, stop on demand or go on demand. So sometimes there is a delay. Um, so now, part of it I'm going to actually go back and forth with the actual carriage. So, I'm going to go back and forth. The carriage moves. While I'm watching the carriage, I'm going to look at that wire tape on the this opposite side, the black one, which is the power cables from the main controls up into the carriage. Uh, I can't see that there is a little bit of damage on the rail, uh, so we'll see if it actually moves back and forth. It does finally go. It just took a little while. Um, that is something that probably should be that carriage should probably be replaced. Um, some of those wires do dangle a little far down, so it could be evened out some. Um, but they do look secured up to that rail, so that is an optional, uh, optional thing. So you'll see if the carriage goes back and forth. Now when it hits the wall, it should automatically stop. And as you hear, I do have two different speeds on these rails. Should be a safety stop here. It hits the wall. It hits the car beam. Okay, right there. That is means that the wheel that was trying to move the carriage is still operating. So there's no safety switch once you hit a, a barrier on that side. Bring it back to the other side. Check those different speeds. Short speed. Steady speed. operates trying to push it through the wall so that's a safety feature that needs to be adjusted so now I'm going to bring it out a little bit so I can bring the hoist down and what I'm going to look for on this is I'm going to be watching the wire rope as it's coming down looking for any burrs any twists any bends in the wire and I'm also going to look for a limiting switch on how low this thing goes on how low it goes most cranes will come down to touch or almost touch the floor 
depending on how they were installed, they should all have some type of safety switch that once they get to a certain uh, either high or low uh, position that they will automatically stop and cut off power to the motor. And again, as it's coming down, you want to inspect the wire rope, looking for any damage, uh, inspect how the pulley system, how your block and tackle here are operating. Look for the pulley up on top because this is a single wire, so the run comes down from a fixed point, <clears throat> feeds down through the pulley, back up to another pulley, back down to another pulley, back up to the wire rope. And then also while you're looking at the wire rope, you want to see if it's, uh, if it's binding up or anything up on that wire rope. So far, it looks smooth on the cable, it looks fairly good, it's not excessively dirty or excessively greasy. You don't want to have too much grease on it. So as we go here, we should be stopping sometimes, and it's not. So that is a bad sign. It did not stop automatically anywhere. I had to stop it. I don't want to trance how much going down, because you also don't want to unwind this very much. You want to at least maintain, while you're putting up any type of load, at least two to three wraps on that barrel. Uh, otherwise, you have a chance on pulling that cable out. So as we're coming down, actually, as it works, it's seven and a half ton. You can't quite tell on that little half on that sign, so that's another safety feature. At least it is listed here. <laughs> on this crane, also, you're not going to want to look at the hook. You're going to want to look for any damage. Most hooks should not be painted because that right there will hide a crack. Paint will hide cracks, so paint is a bad thing on here. Um, a lot of hooks also require that you have to do a dye pen once a year, so actually you clean it all off of all the grease, put a fluorescent dye into it um, that, that you have to see under a blackout, then clean that off, and then that way that'll penetrate any cracks to see. Um, again, something the annual certification may do. This one here has a safety latch. So when you slide the sling in here, slide the hose in, it'll come, it'll stop, make sure it does not exceed coming past here. Check the bearings, make sure it does turn, spin, move nicely. This one here doesn't look too bad, it's not excessively loose. Uh, the barrel here's got the pin nut. The block and tackle moves nicely on its bearing, or the bearings for the, the uh, pulleys. So this one doesn't look too shabby. Um, so now, operation, like I said, otherwise, You'll have up and down, left or right, and then and this is the carriage, one way or the other, and this is going to be your crane gantry, the large hole mechanism, one way or the other. Um, again, you just have to become familiar with your crane and your overhead inspection um, on what you're looking for and what you're looking at. And then, like I said, get a, it's easier to get a checklist, um, and there's plenty of them, I'm sure, online somewhere. Um, also, any type of sling that you use, those also have some type of certification and some type of set checklist that you need to do each time prior to actual use of that sling um, or use, use of that left lifting device attached to the crane, not just the crane. Uh, again, you will have, have a certified corporation come in and do them once a year. You do yours every day before the operation. Um, if you know somebody else has done it, don't take their word for it. You do your quick, off, quick inspection also. It really doesn't take that long. I'm um, taking a long time on explaining it here, but it really doesn't take a long time to do. A few seconds or a few minutes um, of, of a safety inspection could be a lifetime for your safety. So um, I hope this kind of shows some of the uh, operations of the crane and actually how the safety inspections of the crane get it really inspected, get it checked out, and know what you're doing. Thank you very much.